What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back my original segment, Boxing Ego's First Look, a tale of the tape, a sneak peek, a preview of the fight before the fight. Now, a fight that's not getting as much buzz as I expected, but it should be a good fight nonetheless that I'm definitely looking forward to is WBO Super Featherweight Champion, Vasil Lomachenko versus WBA Champion, Jason Sosa. The fight goes down April 8th on HBO. And it's a unification. They're both champions at 130 pounds. Now, the reason I enjoy watching Lomachenko is he's a phenomenal talent. And me as a boxing fan, he's, he's the type of guy you would want to probably study. Because there's a lot of a lot of things and a lot of takeaways from, from his style of fight. How he neutralizes certain things. I thought for certain the Gary Russell Jr. fight. I thought Gary Russell was going to beat him. And I thought even if Gary Russell were to lose, I thought it would be a very tough fight. And he, with impeccable timing, he was able to neutralize Gary Russell's speed and just kind of offset it. And Gary Russell, that's obviously his career worst performance. And I attribute that to Lomachenko's just smarts, his ring IQ. He's a very smart dude. You don't have almost 400 amateurs without being good right so Lomachenko his, his amateur record is stated at like 396 wins with one loss so clearly Lomachenko is, is one of the the elite amateurs that boxing has ever seen I mean 396 wins to one loss and the guy he lost to he avenged that loss and beat that guy twice so definitely a illustrious amateur pedigree he's fought in the likes of Felix Verdejo as an amateur. He says that was a tough fight, but he was the victor in that particular for fight. And I'm looking forward to this. This, is, this should be a good main event on HBO. Lomachenko, very nimble, very agile. And he's coming off of an impressive win over Nicholas Axman Walters. I did a seven reasons on that fight. I did a fight prediction. I did pick correctly Vasil Lomachenko. I didn't think he was going to stop per se. A guy like Nicholas Walters, who's pretty big and durable. So that's a testament, again, to the... When guys... I, I don't think it was... I think the inactivity of Walters definitely played a part. But I don't think it was so much that he was just so badly hurt. It's guys like that, like Lomachenko, they they can frustrate you. They're like a rabbit or something. And you, you know what I mean? You can't do anything with them. And you're just getting hit. And I do think Lomachenko hurt... Axeman Welters in the, the round right before it was stopped, before he quit or whatever. But I think it was just like a more of a psychological beatdown. Like he was getting dominated. He was off a long layoff. His body probably wasn't cooperating. And Lomachenko was just, you know what I mean, aggressive. He's just, he's a good fighter. Now, the reason I like this particular fight is because from my perspective, to beat a guy like Vasil Lomachenko, the blueprint is his only loss Orlando Salido I find it very hard to beat Vasil Lomachenko line for line bar for bar skill for skill again the guy has almost 400 amateur fights and since his first and only pro loss to Orlando Salido he appears to be getting better to be getting stronger and wiser he moved up and knocked out Rocky Martinez and dominated him like this is not the same thing with Walters, same thing with Gary Russell. That's that's not really ordinary if you consider how few fights that Lomachenko has. He has like eight fights, under ten fights, and he's dominating guys. So clearly the amateur background, the two consecutive gold medals have paid off for Lomachenko and it's enabled him to transition well as a pro. So that's that's pretty important when you I mean you notice that immediately guys like Vasil Lomachenko and Rigandau they're able to capture titles and Guillermo Rigandau beat he's a gold medalist also he beat Nonito Donaire and he had like 12 or 13 fights and Donaire hadn't lost in 11 years and his the loss was I think is like his second pro fight so it was early in his career as he's learning you know what I mean learning and transitioning to the pros so very impressive for the, with these Olympians. That's why I'm looking forward to it. Top rank got a bunch of them. Ring star got some. Golden boy. That's why I'm looking forward to this this new batch of Olympians who just turned pro. Top rank has Shakur Stevenson, Olympic silver medalist. They have the Irishman, Michael Connolly. Then you have Ring star who has some fighters, the Baldettis brothers, and 
Um, Golden Boy has Marlene Esparza. So I, I always look forward to these Olympians, especially if they medaled, because some of the great fighters that are currently in the sport, the Rigondals, Lomachenkos, Andre Ward, those are all gold medalists, right? So I think a lot of these Olympians up and coming will have a, a good a good shot at having a successful career because they've been primed and prepared for this moment. Now, back to Lomachenko versus Sosa. It is an HBO event. It's a world championship boxing, WBO champ Lomachenko versus the WBA champ Jason Sosa. Now, the thing I like about Jason Sosa He's durable. He's resilient. They have a mutual opponent, which is Nicholas Walters. I personally thought Nicholas Walters was robbed. I don't think the fight was a robbery. I think it was somewhat close, but I think he was robbed of the fair decision. I thought Nicholas Walters clearly beat Jason Sosa, and they scored it a draw. I don't think it was a draw at all. But my takeaway from that fight is a guy with stoppage power who stopped Vic Darcini and who stopped Nonito Donaire, a guy like Axeman Walters, right? We, we hadn't really heard, most people hadn't really heard much of Jason Sosa, and he was tough, and he was kind of hanging in there and, and making it somewhat quasi-competitive. So that showed me something. And then Jason Sosa, he later went on to stop an up-and-coming prospect who was getting a lot of rave and a lot of praise in Javier, Javier Fortuna. He got knocked down, I think, in that fight, and he got back up and ended up stopping him in China, I think is where they fought. So... I like Jason Sosa. He spars with my dude, Tevin Farmer, out of Philly, who's a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal fighter, and that's quality work to me. And Tevin Farmer's also sparred with Vasil Lomachenko. But it's, to me, styles make fights, and it becomes very hard to outskill such a skillful southpaw like Vasil Lomachenko, right? In fact, in, that, in or around that division, in terms of like just trying to match wits with him and outbox him, I feel like Rigondeaux would probably be the only guy that matches up well because they're both southpaws. They both have good athleticism, things like that, good amateur pedigree. But a lot of these other guys, they're not going to match up well with a pure boxing contest because guys like Lomachenko, they're master class boxers, right? And you, I mean, you could say Lomachenko's a boxer puncher, but he, he's a really good boxer, right? And he has he has savvy and ring IQ and finesse. So the thing I like about the Jason Sosa fight is it's not really his MO. He's, he's a tough dude from the East Coast. He's from New Jersey. And he showed you his toughness and durability fighting a puncher in Nicholas Walters. Javier Fortuna is another puncher. And then he got knocked down, got back up, and went on to stop and upset the favorite, which was Fortuna. So... I think that could make for an interesting fight because, again, it, it's really hard to match wits with a guy like Vasil Lomachenko and just like, oh, bop, bop, and have a textbook boxing match and outbox him. You've seen Gary Russell Jr. try that, and it didn't work. So I think it, it's going to take to to maybe ruffle his feathers. It's probably going to take a Norlando Salido, tough, rugged guy who who has like a like a constant pressure has heart, won't give up, and that kind of thing, if that makes any sense to you guys. So that's what I think it takes. I mean, that's the only real fight where he can draw vulnerabilities from Lomachenko where he he looked, he lost, you know what I mean, was that particular fight with Salido. So to me, and he seems like he's gotten better since that point. But again, in such a limited pro career with eight fights, that's the the fight where he looked the most vulnerable a guy who's just rugged tough kind of that madonna i don't give a fuck type of awkwardness and just by any means necessary rabbit punch hit you low um come in with my head just overweight you know what i mean rehydrate that type of rugged in the trenches type of fight and i think jason sosa he can possibly provide that type of rugged affair, which makes this an interesting fight. But clearly Lomachenko is going to be the favorite in this fight. But I like the style matchup because most guys don't have a shot to outbox Lomachenko. They're going to have to try to rough him up and impose their will and show more heart than him, show that they have more power than him. And, and that kind of thing. And in boxing, styles make fights, and those things can't happen. You, I've seen guys like to me. I think Adrian Broner has better boxing technique and skill 
hand speed, athleticism, rhythm than a Marcos Maidana. But you've seen with that size disparity, Broner was new to the welterweight division, things of that sort. It didn't work out in Broner's favor. He showed hard in the fight, but Maidana clearly won that fight. So I think sometimes that's what it takes is that that stylistic matchup where you're kind of the polar opposite. You go in there trying to outbox and out jab and out finesse a guy like Lomachenko, you might be in for a long night. Now let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Vasil Hitech Lomachenko has a record of 7-1, and one, and of course that one loss came at the hands of veteran Orlando Salido. Jason Sosa has a record of 20, 1, and 4 draws, and as I mentioned, one of those draws was to Nicholas Walters. I think that should have been a loss, but the judge has seen otherwise. Age is identical. They're both 29 years old. Height pretty close. Lomachenko is listed at 5 foot 6 inches. Jason Sosa is the shorter man, one inch shorter at 5 foot 5 inches, which is going to be interesting because we know that Lomachenko is a master class boxer. Now, this is taking place at 130 pound division where both fighters have a belt. Jason Sosa is the WBA champion. Lomachenko knocked out Rocky Martinez to become the WBO champion. And the reach advantage goes to the shorter man. Jason Sosa has a reach of 67 inches to Lomachenko's 65 and a half inches. So I'm looking forward to this fight. It should be a fun one. And this is the type of fight that I think would be interesting for Lomachenko. Again, it's going to be real hard to outbox him. But we'll see if Jason Sosa can make it a gritty, tough fight and really a dog fight. And I think that's what his game plan should be. You don't really want to go in against a guy as skilled as Lomachenko and try to outsmart him and outthink him because you usually come up short. But we'll see what both fighters do. This will take place again on HBO. Let me know what you guys think. Is this the Lomachenko show or does Jason Sosa have a chance to get Lomachenko's belt who has been beaten once? Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video, like the video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.